What's up guys, I'm Doofus McDooface, and today we're going to be talking about our opening roll. I did this a long time ago, people really thought it was helpful, uh, some people wanted it a little bit more in depth, uh, so I'll see what I can do today, and at least I get some learning content for you. Uh, so here's, here's going to be how we're going to do this. I'm going to choose a mastermind, and then I'm just going to create a roll, right? I'm going to go, really look at my roll, pick my six units, and sort of tell you the waves on which I'd be placing them, uh, around how much I'd be pushing, uh, and yeah, placement, just an overall idea. Just what goes through my mind right when I'm doing the roll. This is sort of what I'm doing is I'm game planning, usually the first 10 waves, sometimes farther into the game. But without further ado, um, I would see the Legion spell as a sorcerer, counterattack, giant snail. Sometimes I'd want to play Fiesta. Sometimes I'd want to do like double lock in Archer, Archer with Tempest, you know, for amazing Trinity Archer with Flying Force. Uh, but for this purpose, uh, let's let's just do a greed because this is this is just sort of the basics. This is like the original the original Nova. master run. So I'm gonna look through this. We got the Archer instantaneously with Sork being in the game. I'm going to take the archer, right? It's it's not even a thought for me. Archer and Oathbreaker is amazing. So that's that's what I'm going to take right off the bat. So I know I'm going to start archer. I'm going to have a chain fist and a split. But let me go through possible rolls here too. Let me not get too, too in-depth instantaneously, right? So with this roll, I'd be going archer, chain fist, um, of course, I need an arcane tank, uh, sea dragon. Okay, let me let me just slow it down. All right, so with this roll, I'm placing archer on one. I'm placing a chain fist that's going to be an oath breaker for wave three. I'm easy holding. I'm going five, maybe six workers, depending on how hard I want to push. From there, I need to start thinking about wave five. Um, so wave five, I either need a Zeus or sea dragon right for me i'm probably just gonna take the sea dragon i also like the cat or sorry I, I mean i like cat don't get me wrong but i like the steed with this combo because of uh because of the sea dragon it's gonna be giving it mana um with this roll i'm absolutely screwed on wave nine so i'm probably gonna take the butcher and then it's really it's really open to me right and why would you take the butcher well i kind of like the head chef for wave nine right the head chef on wave nine best unit in the game there's no doubt about it um i mean there is that aps right there is the aps for like god sork there's also antler for tankage this is one of those tough ones this is where you sort of got to go with your gut and really think what is my weakest wave so this is waves one through three Waves just one, five, it's okay. Nine, it's okay. I'm going to reroll to get rid of the chain fist at some point. Although I do like having a cheap tier one to throw in my split. You guys know I love having so many tier ones in the split. Uh, steeds are amazing for those arcane waves. A three, uh, five if I had a ton of gold. Seven, eight, right? That's my seven, eight. This is really good on five, decent on nine, 10. Of course, I've got damage, but I really could use the tankage of white mane, right? It's not a bad idea. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go for that. Other roles I could go, right? People love millennium with the APS, right? People love millennium with the APS. I'm, I'm not going to choose it, right? Because I love my archer with sword. I love how the split works. I love how you can push really hard. Um, but some people might take the Millennium with the APS uh, because it is a great combo. Zeus's, right? Which is Bazooka's first upgrade. Zeus's with Steeds, APS. That also is a very tasty roll, right? But for me, I feel very confident with Archer lately, especially because I'm able to see the Legion spells and I see Sork. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm give myself 250 gold. And I guess we could really just 
really go for this. I don't know if it'll work, but I'll give myself 20 Mythium. So, I'm going to place the Archer. Re reasonably, or recently, I've been placing it in the middle. Right? I like it in the middle. Place the Chain Fist right there. This guarantees that I hold a snail. Right? You cannot leak to a snail like this. Right? You just can't. So, as we go through, I guess I can get, just go all the way through a game, right? All right, I'm gonna push to five workers. Always pushing to five workers with this. I think even even if I get saved on one, I really, I really don't care. Like unless you're getting fiested into, you're really not in that much danger. Um, I'm not gonna push an, an additional worker, right? Unless. Unless I see, right? Unless I see that my opponent has, uh, has like Sakura or Pyro, right? There's no real world I'm going to push to six workers unless they've leaked. So unless they've given us gold or I know that the guy sending me, right? If the guy sending me has low workers, then maybe. But other than that, I'm just not going. Right? I'm not, I'm not going to over push. Um, so I could go, so that there's a couple of options here, right? Got 125 gold. I can A, just start building the steed back here, right? I guarantee I don't leak here. And it's going to be giving me mana for the sea dragon, right? It's going to be giving me mana. Uh, but just to sort of show off here, right? Now I know it's going to say I'm way over, but that's because... I'm the one sending myself, right? I'm the one sending myself. If we had gone Oathbreaker here, look how much gold we have, right? So I could have gone six workers, right? I guess for all intents and purposes, let's just go six workers, see what happens. Let's do a king up. My guy's not very not very uh, weak here. I'm just gonna king up. But yeah, with this split, see, and this this is why the archer is so good, right? The archer just shreds the left side, right? Archer shreds the left side. And then whenever that unit in your split dies, they rotate over. Easy. Um, if I receive the send there, I'm probably pushing to seven or not eight. Where eight workers is... is is suicidal with Archer because you are so bad five, right? You are so bad five. Bullseye. Right, Archer's 450, Life Binder's 450. Realistically, I wouldn't want Bullseye. them to know, right? Realistically, I would not want them to know that I have the Sea Dragon on five. I might need to send additional Mythium just, just so you guys understand. Right. I've got so much gold here. I don't know why I have gold. All right. So, this is this is like an average build, right? Yes, I'm just going to push a worker because I guess I should have on wave 3. But yeah, this is an average build wave 5, right? Your archer tanks the boss, right? Archer is going to tank the boss. The boss will always go left because the archer is half a tile higher than my melee unit. So archer tanks boss. Sea dragon is going to heal and help kill the boss. In addition, the steed is going to give mana to the sea dragon, right? If I had this stuff on the right side, my archer dies. I don't kill the boss. It's all bad. This is where positioning is so important. So important. And let's go for, for four snails here. Let's let's just see what four snails look like. And it's going to say I'm 80 over because it's not counting the mythium I'm sending. So right here, see the archer is tanking a lot, but the sea dragon is healing it, right? And this is when you ping your archer and you show off to your buddies, right? You show off to your buddies and you're like, hey, look at how cool this is. Look at how cool my archer is. That's awesome, right? But if, if you didn't save the archer there, 
right? If the archer just dies, you're going to lose half of its damage, if not more. So that's that's where the importance of uh, of really having those right units on your weak wave, right? And I know that my my wave five, I have sea dragon. I had the steed in this in this case scenario. And even if I didn't have steed, I was just going to throw down some chain fists. Uh, I just need to kill the boss with the archer tanking it. It's extremely important. Right so now nine workers seems seems pretty okay. I gotta, gotta unpause. Right. And I'm just gonna keep building right now for wave wave six. Uh, sorry, wave seven and eight. But important thing again, right? So wave five, we wanted that to tank the boss. Now I need to up my split so that any big send on wave six would go right. So let's say they send a brute right now. Brute goes on my archer. I leak everything. Bad, very bad, right? In this case scenario, I'm going to add a chain fist right there and a chain fist right there. This at least guarantees that half the wave plus the sends go right. Still a world where my archer could die, right? Still a world where my archer could die here. So let's not have it die. Right? Because I know the steeds are too far back. And yeah, the sea dragon's gonna heal it. But I probably want to help it out. Let's send another force now, right? This guy's getting fed. I'm I'm starting to receive some really nasty scents. So I'm gonna need perfect positioning here. Perfect positioning here. So in a perfect world, this archer is gonna tank too. So I've got, remember, wave 6 acts a little faster. So let's see what happens here. Here we go. There's the archer tanking a little bit. Alright. It's tanking a lot of it. Okay, but it, it did tank pretty decently. Now my steeds are cooking. Alright, is this slow or is it just me? felt really slow <laughs> that was pretty bad i could not hold the full 40 snail resend the 80 mythium resend was way too much there way too much there but they sent a dino that archer dies instantly right and i played it kind of chickeny here with the chain fist right that was a bad leak kind of embarrassing Kind of look at that. Look at that one more time. I mean, I'm with you guys. Like, how do, how do we improve, right? At the end of the day, how do you just how do you improve? My bow is drawn. If I went with my this was my original plan. This causes the archer to tank a little bit more. But yeah, then it tanks everything, see? But it does get more mana to the archer. Right, see, in a perfect world, this archer is just going to live forever. Just not this world. But honestly, leaking two wouldn't be the end of the world, right? Because, or, or three, right? It's not the end of the world. I'm going to be 10, 11 workers, even if I leak there. I have no real weak waves going forward. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Because you're really strong, 7 and 8. Right? Like, you could just full push here. Right? Let me just keep building in an aura for the head chef, right? I'm 615. I'm reasonably under here. Reasonably under here. Right, if we look at info 7, it says 570, but in a normal game, that's just not realistic. Right? I can hold pretty darn under. Right? So I just needed to get through wave 6. So there's another world, right? There's a world where wave 6, it's actually going to be better for me not to over push. Just in case I get that resend, right? Just in case I get that resend on 6. If I easy hold that, I can push even harder and not give up any gold loss. So maybe I should get that through my brain and actually think about that. Um, but yeah, 
wave eight. Maybe I add another archer if they haven't sent. In a perfect world, I could have a trinity if I'm scared, right? There's many options here. You could even do the nasty, uh, like in that case scenario where I receive a dino, right? I can either full push or I could build for wave nine, right? So I'm building, I'm building earlier. I'm building for an earlier wave. By building for an earlier wave, I'm preparing for wave nine, which is my weak wave. All right, and that's where I have the head chef. All right, head chef, best unit wave nine in the game. Yeah, just, just beautiful. Now this is a baby send, right? This is not the size send you're gonna get a w on a wave nine. But really, really juicy. But once again, I've sort of put this all blah, right? I never planned for these learning videos, but I feel like that's just better. You should never plan. You just go go with the flow. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much the basics of of how I'd play this role early, right? We haven't even gotten into the wave eleven, right? The wave 11, that's when we can start using our sort. All right, wave 11, a sort trinity is just extremely busted. Uh, we could also re-roll at some point, right? Re-rolling to see where our weakness, uh, for example, I'm quite weak 15. Like, although it seems like I'm pretty decent, right? Like 12, eh. I've, st I've got a sword trinity for 12, right? And I could just go for a second trinity. Not scared there. 11, I'm not amazing, but you don't realize how good a sword trinity is on 11, right? Like, even if I full push, if I full push there, and I get recent nas uh, the, re the, the exact same recent on 11, the sword trinity and the head chef are going to do a lot more than you think. Like, yeah. Easy hold. Easy hold. 1440, which is pretty, pretty under. I mean, that's a baby recent, right? But just, just so you guys understand. Sort Trinity, amazing. If all of my blah, blah, blah helps at all, just understand. Sort Trinity, power. Um, but yeah, as I was going, I think re-rolling would be a great option. And, uh... Not the best reroll, I'm going to be honest, right? There, there's, there's a couple of things here. There's a couple of things. If we're scared of 14, Haven would be amazing, right? I'd probably throw the nasty Haven right there. Uh, could also do a Haven that catches the split right there. And I could just get rid of the Butcher, right? Because I really only wanted the Butcher for Wave 9. Um, never been a fan of Caskets. I'd rather my mana goes into Sea Dragons or the Head Chef. Right, boom trees, but we're already pretty decent. 16. Um, although trends are really good, and eggs, I could hear hear me out. Right, this is this is more a strategic thing, but uh, your role is part of the strategy, right? Let's say we receive a send on 11 or 12, right? And I'm scared of 15. I can egg, right? on now 12 or 13, right? Because we received a send on 11 or 12. I can egg on wave 12 or 13, almost saying like, hey, you guys got to send now wave 13 or 14 because I'm going to have so much value. Although it'll be bad 15, my value will be good 15, right? This is where the power of eggs is, right? But we're not playing anyone. So I'm just going to take the bunk for now and just show a couple of different ways I could play it. All right, I could do a nasty bunk to catch the split. A lot of the higher level people don't like this because it, it works on melee waves, right? Like, look at how cool that is. Look at how cool that bunk was right there. Perfect, right? Absolutely perfect right there. Unfortunately for me, unfortunately for me, it's not, it's not very viable on, on 15 on ranged waves where I'm very weak, right? I'm very weak 
on 15. So although that'd be amazing for 12, 13, 14, catches the, the, the split breakdown, we go to wave 15, it dies pretty much last, right? So it's it's not it's not as useful, right? Like it's tanking a little bit here, but see, dies last, right? So that's where you've got to you've got to really think through your build. Are you building this this bunk in the on the head shift spot to tank the breakdown as a melee wave protection, or should we build it right there, right? If I build it right here. It does its job on 15, right? It actually tanks on 15. So then the steeds don't die instantaneously. I mean, they still die pretty fast, but at least, at least in that case, the Haven tanks, right? Because there's nothing worse than a DPS bunk. A lot of people talk about this. A lot of people talk about this. Um, but yeah, that'd be pretty much the first first 15 waves um but once again for 15 i definitely need to up the pegasus right that's going to be something i need to do up the pegasus add more life binders um and then i should easily hold 15 depending on the size of their send right we're just talking roll not really a send protection here but yeah, if we go back to 15, it's a decent amount of value. Easy holding. Right, see? Our Haven's actually tanking here. Right? It's both tank, everybody's tanking. Like, this is just perfection. Right? Absolute perfection. Uh, but I'm going to let you know right now, I die 18. There, there's there's not much we can do in this situation. This is a bit more of the strategy, right? I am absolutely dead wave 18, right? Absolutely dead wave 18 with this roll combination, right? Even if I go for like white mains, life binders and steeds, I'm still really, really weak. So either A, we need to push really hard for 17 or B on 15 push zero workers. Right? Assuming we received our send on 15, we push zero workers. Don't show value. All right? Don't show value, that much value on 16 and 17. Make it seem like we're weak. And then add as much of our value, add everything on 18. And be like, ha ha ha. We didn't push workers. And hope that we live 18 and win the game. But let's go deeper into this, right? I really like looking at other archers. I know this is getting a little little deeper into it than I had expected. Uh, but let's look at leaderboards, top game, and find the elite archer by Witterson. Fantastic. See how he played this. All right. Oh, look. Look at that. Trinity archer with Sork and champion. So his was a champion. Wow. Exactly the same thing I did. <laughs> Except his role, he did take the APS. And the Millennium. And the Sea Dragon. Wow, our builds look very similar. Right? He easy held. He pushes to five workers. Um, if he has champion, he's going to go six. Right? He went six workers. Right? Because he has champion. He just built a couple more. Didn't even build the Sea Dragon wave five. He just chose to go with the Oath Breakers. That's because he received. He's eight workers. He's pushing nice. Uh, he got away with wave six. right? Wave six, he received a pretty big send. A little more value than we did in the sandbox. Um, that front archer definitely died. But he has oath breakers and another archer. So no big deal. It's just 12 workers. Easy holding. right? They take baby king. No big deal. He's got a trinity now. Right, because he's just he's he's just so far ahead, right? He's just so far ahead. Holds the mole, holds the robo, adds an antler, he's fifteen workers. Him and aviator just killing it. Now he shows the APS and Sork, right? I I will warn you guys, putting a sea dragon in a split 
anything column three with range is a bit risky. Now Witterson's one of the best, so just don't don't take that away. Ah, uh, see his his teammate eggs. They're both terrible fifteen, right? They are both horrible fifteen. Horrible wave fifteen. So teammate gets away with the egg. They're still going 15, but at least he got the egg. Uh, and yeah, it's just a wave 15. He did add the doomsday. They leak, but it's a baby leak. Yeah, baby leaks by both of them because Aviator got away with the egg. Um, Witterson leaks a little bit. And yep, look. they. I mean, they didn't push, right? They did the baby push. They did a baby push. And we're okay with 18. Oh, wow. And they died to... They died because they sued. Wow. That's crazy. They died because they sued. Okay. Yeah, Afma, Afma sued into Aviator. That's wild. And then he only probably... But we're getting too far away from it. All right. So that was roll number one with Greed. Heavily focusing on our, our Archer. Right, most of these roles that I do, I really just think about one great unit. Right, most of these roles I think of, I do one great unit. For this one, let's mega mine, see what they give us. Well, we can't, we can't hybrid. <laughs> can't hybrid. Uh, hybrid was taken out of ranked, um, because it's way too RNG. It's actually really powerful if you keep, if you keep rolling things with hybrid. Um, if you've ever played a classic, uh, if you keep rolling things with hybrid that are more gold than you spend with hybrid, it's like a gold farm. So your build will be worth way more. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at this. Legion spells pawn shop. A lot of high level players see pawn shop instantly take chaos. The reason they take chaos, so we're going to have to play this full Welcome game out. This will be beautiful. Nova. The reason that they, uh, go chaos is because after wave 11 pawn shop you can sell for 90 90 percent refund uh so with chaos you're getting saved on you're getting saved on oh they're definitely sending wave 16 wave 16 comes i roll flowers you sell a ton of your units place a bunch of death caps and hold this end right so it gives you that chance where in a normal roll like uh wave 15 of the last roll, you're super weak, right? Pawn shop could get could pawn shop chaos could give us an answer, right? Pawn shop chaos could give us an answer. We look super weak. Wave 15 comes, they give us Hoda or something. They give us priestess. We sell a couple of our units and drop two Azirias. It's really unfortunate when you're playing against it, and really awesome, really awesome when you're playing with it. So. We've got plenty of options here. Chaos. We could A. Windhawk. Faking Fiesta. I don't like to do this because if I get snailed, my fake Fiesta hurts my game. So I usually don't do that. I could Sakura. Right? I could Sakura. It's low workers. But I'm really strong with it. Right? I would say I'm really strong with Sakura. Uh... A lot of people like casket and a seedling. Casket seedling, you can get like six, seven workers really easily. It's quite nasty. But you're weak on AoE waves. Or, sorry, you're weak. I mean, I guess you are kind of weak on AoE waves, right? If you get sent like a mole or a hermit, for example, wave five, right? Like this really only has a weak wave of five and six. So those first four waves, you're just pushing workers like crazy. It's really nothing your opponent can do with this exact build. Um, almost want to play this one out. All right, we've already got gold. Let's just king up. Uh, but yeah, this is this is just so juicy. We also had Poda, right? We all know I love Poda. There's Pyro. There's Zeus. Uh, but this this is a pretty nasty combo. This is this is a nasty one. Yes, so of course, we're gonna push to four workers. All right. Chaos comes. I'm gonna push to five workers. All right. 
Easy holding that. Uh, oh, I didn't get gold for that. Whoops. I messed it up. I messed it up. Okay, good to know. Well, we're learning. With sandbox, if you hit clear, you do not get the gold. Alright. Well, I didn't kill anything, right? I don't believe I killed anything. Okay, and if you're worried, you could just add one of your little units. I think I gave myself too much gold. So if you're worried here, you can add just one little unit. No big deal. Right, and then you've got options, right? Right here. Right here is where good players and bad players, right? You could just safely, safely, safely go with the Iron Maiden upgrade. Right, staying five workers. We'd go six workers and add a gargoyle and get really aggressive. A lot of these things depend on the person sending you, right? Is the person sending you on wave two? Are they saving until three? Are they low workers, right? Before it was just like build this, build that. But really you have to factor in all these things, right? But just for this case, Right, just for this case, let's say they try us, right? They tried us with the lizard snail. They're sending a lizard because I have a casket. Right, but haha, -ha, I went for the cage of pain. I went cage of pain, and now I can go eight workers. Seven, eight workers. Now I'm feeling pretty good. You're probably only getting seven workers. I think by sending the lizard, I gave myself a lot more income. Or income. And you're just easy holding four, right? Cage of Pain's not leaking. Not without a brute or something crazy. And I've got the seedling. Like seedlings are actually like so insane early game. So insane early game. Um But here we go guys. We're gonna leave. Right, and this is where chaos, if you over push and you don't get an amazing unit, you are screwed. Right, I got greedy, I pushed eight workers. I'm probably leaking to any recent. Right, let's just be honest, I'm probably leaking to any recent. Cage of Pain to wave five is just the worst damage. It's AoE, there's no single target to kill a boss. So I need to think this through. How can I hold best? with what I've got. Well, Pixie, Core Pixie is magic damage. All right, Core Pixie is magic damage. I've got 85, I could go for a Windhawk, go for a Dark Mage. I'm probably gonna go for a Windhawk here. It's not the prettiest build ever. Let's see what this would look like. All right, I'm hoping to at least kill the boss. And in this, in this case, right, like last wave, we really cared about who tanked the boss. In this one, it doesn't really matter who tanks the boss because, like, I just need some delay for my pixie. Nobody's killing the boss that fast. It's not like we're going to have this Windhawk tank the boss and live. We don't have that much damage, right? So in this case, it doesn't really matter. And I'm really scared of a hermit. Maybe we'll run this back just so you guys can see what a hermit looks like. All right, in this case, the Windhawk actually might do exactly what we wanted, right? Tanks the boss and doesn't die, right? It's insane, right? Very good value. Right now, even if I hold, let's not forget how weak we are wave six, right? Might be a time for a nasty overbuild, push no workers and add berserk. Right? I held there, but just so you guys understand, just so you guys understand why you should always be scared. A hermit into a casket on five is is more than a fear. Right? It's, it's more than a fear. It's terrifying. Right? The hermit means that the windhawk will die. I would think at least. Could be wrong. The split went a little different. Right? I kill the boss. 
and I'm gonna leak a little bit. It's not that bad of a leak, right? It's not that bad, but it's just something you gotta be aware of, right? And why do they send you a Hermit? Because the casket is AoE damage, right? So this is not the worst leak ever, right? You're not that upset, but get it through your minds. That casket is bad wave six. It's like no damage, right? Zero damage, right? You are in danger. You are in danger, wave six. So if you somehow are able to get the violet and push a worker, that's amazing. If you can't, if you cannot push a worker and get the violet, just get the violet, right? That would be my suggestion. Now, maybe you leak really bad and you can't even afford the violet. And that's where we got to look into like a devil fish, right? A devil fish in the split. But is the split really that good, right? Maybe these units just aren't very good is what I'm starting to feel. Well, let's just see what happens. We're able to afford the violet. Awesome. We think we're okay. But let's take a look at it. Let's just take a look and see what happens. This is actually an amazing split. It did a violet like tank, the robo, and a couple. This is this is really good. Right? And now I'm gonna push like a million workers because I know I've got the I've got the the casket for next. Oh man, I'm pushing so hard. I'm pushing so hard at this moment. Right, like I'm full pushing. I'm full pushing. Probably not gonna build anything on wave seven with this type of a build. When's your next week wave? Eight and nine, right? So another case where, yes, full pushing is good. I literally just said that, but you're quite weak on eight and nine. Because if you get sent like five DTs, three DTs, four DTs, right? You're in danger. But we got kind of lucky. So let's I'm gonna income. I guess I'm incoming in myself, so it's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird when you think about it that I'm incoming in myself. I really like how Chaos keeps giving us options to, to discuss, to talk about. We're going to full send ourselves. I'm going to be a meanie. So, we could A, upgrade the Iron Maiden for tankage, which is probably what I'm going to do. B, build an elite archer right which i'm going to do and i'm probably going to place it right there i'll place it right there hoping that it tanks a couple of creeps right could go for gun guns quite risky because wave eight's a ranged wave right wave eight is ranged and you really want to risk killing your all your damage right whatever pierce damage unit i add is my damage sky queen eh I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong, right? It's it's good, but we're in trouble. In any case, right? So whatever we do, it needs to be perfect. So what I would attempt is an archer right there, that right there, something like that, right? I'm hoping to pull a big send to the right, Dino in this case. I'm hoping for the archer to tank one to two creeps. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Right? So let's see what happens. My archer's tanking one to two creeps. Because we added the split with the polys, the Iron Maiden and Violet got onto the wave. The archer is absolutely amazing. Right? Literally perfect. This couldn't go any better for me. Right? Literally everything is split tanking perfectly. Everything is split tanking perfectly. However, let's not totally lie to you guys, right? If we're playing an aggressive opponent, that's not going to be a mole. Or sorry, that's not going to be a dino and snails. It's going to be a mole and snails. So let's just also see the outcome with mole and snails. Right? A mole 
is gonna just shred the Iron Maiden. Right? It's gonna make this damage not. It's gonna make all my damage not as strong. See, now they sort of get stuck on the mole. But that elite archer just tanking perfectly really is just the nuts. But yeah, you see how the cast gets wasted here? Luckily, it's not a big enough scent where I'd leak. But you can tell that I, I, I kill my cast at this time, right? Or pretty much. Right? So you still got to be aware of these things. You, you still got to look out for them. The reason for splits, right? The reason that you have the archer just a touch ahead, but not too far ahead to where it's going to die. Uh, these these are little things that you learn over time and are very helpful. Um, wave 9, pretty weak again. All right. Wave 9, pretty weak again. Yes, we've got Violet, but we would have an Iron Maiden. We would have an Archer. We're not too great. Could go for Shadow Dancer, but I really... I'm in a world where like I love Shadow Dancer and I, I hate it at the same time really risky uh, let's let's just let's place a shadow dancer just just to see what happens right and let's say we're receiving an ogre I'm learning that this is not gonna be an opening roll guide this is just gonna be a me talking through stuff guys and that's okay and I hope it's still useful to you guys but yeah the shadow dancer here let me just talk through everything else we got, right? Never gonna mask on nine. Never gonna ranger on nine. Never gonna upgrade that on nine. Sakura nine, kind of troll, right? But maybe me going a pixie on five is just a troll, right? Um, I still like my split. I'm not gonna delete it. I like my split. Shadow Dancer is pretty much my best unit here, right? If I had extra gold, maybe a dark mage. Uh, but the Dark Mage would probably die to the split breakdown. Unless I kill that poly. Um, I do not have enough for a King Claw. King Claw Wave 9, amazing. Just like Head Chef in last time. The, the the last build. Head Chef or Head Chef and King Claw Wave 9. Amazing units. Right? Amazing units. Um, but for this scenario, Shadow Dancer is pretty much our best. Right? I'm putting it behind. Hoping that it spawns 8 million clones. And we'll see what happens. Let's see what happens. Right. Unfortunately, my archer amazing on eight is not going to be as amazing here. Right. But yeah, Shadow Dancer just keeps spawning clones, spawning clones. It's looking really good. All right, it's looking really good here. Looking amazing. I think I leaked the ogre, but maybe I don't even leak the ogre. Wow. And this is where this stupid Shadow Dancer unit is just so irritating. Because your opponent drops one and then they become just unleakable for the rest of eternity. Right? The rest of eternity, they're just absolutely unleakable. Doesn't really matter what you send. It's uh, painful. Really painful, that, that thing. They resend the mole, but I went for the Trinity Archer. Uh, in this case, the Shadow Dancer did die before the Violet, but you guessed it. With the power of value, we're still holding. Right. Um, what I would say with this build, first case, in the first case, uh, it's kind of block built. Right. It's kind of block built with the seedling position back there. Did that on wave too early. I probably should have made this a Sakura at some point. Sometimes it's just good to go for a Sakura and not push those those two or three workers, right? Don't push three workers, right? Because Sakura and over overvalue, right? Which chaos overbuilding is really powerful. Um, it, it's it's a strategy, right? It it is a strategy. Oh, this is perfect, man. I'm gonna just show this off for 13. Right. The, really, the only weak wave you have with this roll right now is wave 13. That's pretty much it. Right, that's pretty much it. So I just want to show off my Phoenix, and then we'll do another roll. And once again, I'm sorry if this isn't helpful to you guys. And if it is helpful, awesome. This is just sort of what goes through my mind. 
And maybe I should focus more on the roll. Uh, but yeah, let's just go to wave 13. Right? Wave 13. You want your Phoenix to tank, right? You want a Phoenix to tank. Wave 13. It's amazing. Uh, the reason they'd be sending wave 13 is because I have a Trinity. I have an Iron Maiden. I have a Shadow Dancer, which might have been a Dread Knight on wave 12. Right? I have all these units that say, send 13, send 13. So, I'm going to have a Phoenix. I'm definitely going to make a Devilfish over here. Right? I might even try to, like, cheat a little bit. Do something like that. So, if they send a Four Eyes, which is normal if I showed this, right? If they send a Four Eyes, I'm trying to guarantee that the Four Eyes goes, like, right. right? I'm trying to guarantee that the Four Eyes angles on that. So, the Phoenix tanks two or three of Creeps. Lives forever. And it's just perfect. Right? But let's see what happens. Alright, four eyes goes right. My Phoenix is tanking beautifully. Right? Yeah, just look at that Phoenix. Oh, it's a beauty. Right, it dies, but it's perfectly fine. I mean I couldn't draw that up much better. Trinity Archer dies last year. I mean that was just perfect. Right, just absolutely perfect. And just so you guys understand, once again, why I'm talking about Chaos Pawn Shop, right? Let's say they save all the way to 15. Well, we place a bunch of Sacred Steeds, right? They save all the way to 16. We spam like six Yazoras in the split, right? So I could just sell all this garbage. I could sell my Dread Knight, or I could sell the Casket. I could sell, if this is a Sakura, and just place a ton of these things. Because with Pawn Shop, 90%. So Chaos Pawn Shop, really strong mastermind. Uh, and honestly, I would I would recommend to overbuild with Chaos. Because it makes it stronger, right? If you, have, if you have Ocean Templar Gates and you're 50 over, very rarely are you going to leak, right? So the more combos you get from Chaos, the stronger, more unleakable you are. It's amazing. It's beautiful. All right, and let's do one more. Maybe this time focusing more on possible roles. But I'm really, I'm just, I'm just so interested in like my own, my own thought process of how I'm going through these games. But we'll see if it's helpful to you guys. Glacial, Lizard Army, Magician. Magician, this could be one of those situations where you go double locking. This could be one of those situations where you go double locking. You say, I want Steeds and Disciple. Where's the Disciple? <coughs> Am I dumb? I'm, well, that, don't answer that question. We all know the answer. There we go. Steeds. All right, so I'm going Steed Disciple this game. 100%. I see there's Magician. That's that's what I want. That is the, the Legion spell I'm looking to use. So my focus is Disciple Steed. No question, right? Now, still have to build a role. I don't like starting Disciple Wave 1, right? I, I hate it. I think it's a terrible start. Um, we have Sakura possibility, right? Sakura possibility here could be a juicer, right? But let's talk it through, right? Sakura, we've got Harpies. We've got Warg, right? Warg for wave four, not bad. And our, our answer, our answer on wave seven and eight is going to be Disciple and Steeds. It's okay, right? But we're going to need a lot of value if we're going to have a Disciple down. So maybe it's not the best, right? Maybe it's not amazing. But there is a world where I go Disciple, Steeds, Harpy. Sakura, right? And then we just don't show the disciples until after seven or eight. We're on eight, not seven, right? So could work a little bit better. Could work a little bit better. So I don't really have to shift for that disciple because it's hard to get a 195 unit in the early game, right? But a 165 around like five, six, seven isn't as difficult. So let's do it. Let's let's go for the Sakura. Um. Of course, we're taking Disciple Steed. 
I'm going to start with harpies. That means I need to build a little farther up. Um, I definitely like the warg. If I was like a pro, I could do some uh, lioness circles with some steed sort of connecting. Um, and we've got either gates or wander. I'm an early builder, right? I like building for the early game. So I'm going to take wander in this case. And genuinely, from that role, other than like Harpy Steed without the Sakura, right? Without the Sakura as the focus, I really would go for this role. Almost guaranteed. So, I'll build my Sakura pretty far up. Give herself zero gold. Give herself Mythium of 20. We have our one income from double lock in. All right, and let's see what happens. So the key with Sakura is just to have two seedlings on three. 95% um, of the time, that's gonna do the job. 95% of the time, that's gonna do the job. All right, you could build it early, but nah, I wouldn't. All right, now because I'm double lock-in, I'm not going to be able to afford it. So this is a case where, although I just said it, right? I know I said it. Once again, what does the opponent have? Are they a, a high worker start? Gate guard? Consort? Windhawk? Uh, even, even archer, right? Like archer, right? Is there a good chance there's five or, they have five or six workers? Then I need to be scared of receiving 60 Mythium on wave three. Or are they a Poda, right? Are they a Pyro? Are they a Yazora? Are they something that added on wave two quite a bit of value? If that's the case, then maybe I'm not scared here, right? Maybe I'm not worried of needing that second seedling, right? In this case, let's, let's say we're not scared. All right, let's say we're not scared. All right, always going to go even. The reason you build even with your Sakura is so that the DT goes right. Although nowadays, Robos can still wreck your butt. All right, Robos can just shred a Sakura nowadays. All right, unfortunately, they can. Uh, but for this case scenario, oh, I wish I could get rid of that snail because I, I leaked to a 60. I do leak to a six, so maybe we won't. But yeah, in this case, right? DT would be going right. All these guys are lower HP because the seedling hit them, not the DT. All right, easy hold. Wave four, you're quite weak. And that's where you could be a nasty overbuilder, right? You could be that nasty overbuilder and build the warp. You could also push a little bit and build the Harpy. The risk with building the Harpy is that your Sakura might die, but you might hold. So it's just, it's, uh, I mean, this game is all just balancing. Am I okay with possibly leaking, leaking that unit or not, right? And these, these are just things you have to factor into your mind. Are, are you wanting to just go as many workers as possible or play it a little safe, right? You really have you really have to, to to juggle what's most important to you. For me, lately, I've been killing my Sakura. Right? I've been killing my Sakuras by pushing early. And then if it dies, it dies. That's just where I've been at. Right? So in this case, I'm just pushing. And I receive a DT, right? I've only got the two seedlings. I didn't add anything. I get the DT, and I'm hoping, I'm praying, Sakura don't die on me. All right, I'm hoping and praying Sakura don't die, right? In this case, I get away with murder, right? In that case, just receiving the 40, I get away with murder, and now I can be like, okay, maybe I should under push a little bit, right? Maybe I should stop pushing that much. Or you can keep pushing, right? Or you can keep pushing. But now, now I'm just building for wave seven, right? Now in my brain, I'm I'm starting, I'm starting to think about wave seven. 
right? Uh, if you're scared of wave 5, you can build the seedling in front of the Sakura, pulling the boss to the left, uh, because you can die really easily to a robo here. I don't think I could send it in time, could I? Oh, I did send it. This is perfect. Right? So the boss went right. Uh, that robo is killing my Sakura. Right? Look. Robo got me. And genuinely, I would be over overvalued. So although it's only a pro league, that robo hurt. That robo hurts a lot. And this is where sending a Sakura, robos are pretty strong nowadays. Because if, if you can get that robo on the Sakura for the entirety of the wave, it gets cooking. It gets absolutely cooking. Um, but yeah. Once again, Sakura is a really tough thing to, to calculate. Am I getting starved? Right? Or am I getting sent every wave? Um, the main things I would say on wave 7, right? Because we're talking about Sakura, right? Everything is wave 7. That's what we're thinking about. The main thing I would say is try to have your Sakura tank like 40% of the wave, right? If your Sakura can tank like 40% of the wave, it's just so much, so much better, right? Let's let's receive a double Brute here and just see what happens. All right, it's double Brute. Voice. I'm gonna build that two right there, hoping to pill a little bit less over there. And let's give ourselves a sky queen. Uh, you could you oh wow, that was not good. Build. You could build it like that too, right? Sky queen right there. That's just perfect. It's juicy, right? We throw our disciple in there. Liz, or yeah, our disciple in there. Lizard army. Or see, I keep saying lizard army. Maybe I'm gonna not take magician. No, we uh, put our disciple with magician. It also hits the Sky Queen, only losing a tile. It's not that bad, right? But let's just see what this Wave 7 looks like. Right? In a perfect world, my Sakura is going to get super low, but not die. Unfortunately, the Double Brooder was just too much. Right? Why did I leak so bad? Remember, we leaked Wave 5. And I did not go wave six, so we didn't get two stacks. So our Sakura, our Sakura is only four stacks right now. That's important. Um, but also, that's just how weak you are, right? I was only four stacks, right? That's just how weak you are on wave seven. So that's where sometimes overbuilding for wave seven with Sakura is okay, right? Like I always want to just barely hold because that means you've pushed as hard as humanly possible. But wave seven, wave eight, probably not a bad idea to overbuild, right? One thing I like to do, wave seven's come and gone, right? Wave eight, I'm thinking the same thing. Do I wanna push over? Do I wanna push too hard? Do I wanna not push too hard? Here's what I like to do, right? This is kinda nasty, but it's, it's a doofus McDoofus special, right? I like to put a pixie right in front either there or there of my sakura so that the sakura doesn't die to the wave i'm overbuilt right i'm overbuilt i guaranteed get the mythium and if they send me i should probably be okay right probably i'm still quite bad here but at least it guarantees that the Sakura doesn't tank instantaneously. Alright. Sometimes it's good to have your Sakura tank. Other times, not so. Not so. Alright. Workers are more important than Sakura stacks. Alright. But yeah. And just, just so you guys know. We're screwed this game. Right. My Sakura, I'm losing so much value. Imagine having castle and never getting the, the, the castle income wave 11. That's pretty much what happens when your Sakura dies so many times. Right. Just so you know, we're in big trouble. Right. 
What do you do when you're in big trouble? You're probably going to need to go for a long save and overbuild. Right. But different things I could do with this build. Right? We could go for the Lionesses. Right? We could go for Lioness value right here. Oh, I think I leaked quite bad here. Oh, this is a wave nine. Okay. But yeah. Um, I guess we don't even get to show the magician. But yeah. Honestly, all this is saying is don't let your Sakura die. Right? Don't let your Sakura die. Uh, I would have Wanders for wave nine. If I'm worried. Samurai. Right? If you're receiving an ogre. Um, I actually didn't even show that. You know what? This, this is... Let's 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 get back to wave seven. Let's get back to wave seven. Just to show you guys some stuff. Whoop. Okay. Alright, it's wave seven. I've been getting saved on for a long time. Some weirdos will strategically put natural or fortified tanks in the split on wave 7. Doofus, why would you do that? Because if you see this roll and you're a nasty starver, you might send a mimic. Might send a mimic. Right? Arcane. It's going to eat. Little guys, it's going to eat. Little guys, it's going to eat. So what do you do? You throw natural tanks in the split. So that the Mimic isn't doing that much damage. So we could do this both with the Wanderer. Right? Or we could do it with our Wargs. Right? And you're just hoping that the Mimic. Just takes so much time eating that stuff. Right? Once again. I have like no value here. Right? Actually here I only, I only leaked the Mimic. Oh, heartbreaker. Heartbreaker. Heartbreaker alert. Heartbreaker alert right there. Ugh. Heartbreaker. But yeah, if, if I had positioned that a little bit better, where the seedlings are behind, right? If I had the seedling behind the Wanderer, could have been a totally different outcome there. Totally different outcome. Uh, but yeah, Sakura wave 7. Uh, you can always go for double Sakuras. Wish I could find some aviator games. He's he's the king of the double Sakura. He starts building the Sakuras. It's really, really nasty. And then you just play over built and you win the game. Kizik. Let's look at Sakura from Kizik here. All right. Uh, totally different role. Okay, let's see how he takes this one. Sakura, three workers, five workers, right? He also received the DT. Um... He actually greeted quite a bit. That was, that was quite close. Witterson being six workers might have been able to send the 60 and uh, kill his Sakura. But got away with it. Got away with it here. Right, he's right on value. On value, Sakura is a perfectly fine place to be. Oh, he got rowboat. See? And that's what it's saying. You could throw a seedling so that you target the boss. In addition, his Sakura didn't, hopefully, didn't die instantaneously. Right? Whereas, like, if he just had this normal split, the robo would go right on his Sakura. Right? Perfect. And, like I've talked about before, with that headshot building the Butcher on wave 8 for our first roll, he's building a rogue wave on wave 6. Why would you do that? He's building for, you guessed it, wave 7. Wave 8. The waves he's super weak. Right? He gets roboed. And he pulls a casket out of his butt. Oh my goodness, that's so beautiful. Right? 50 over, perfectly fine. Because now he's he's getting to push. He's tied for the most workers. But he's got the most value. Because the Sakura is just non-stop gaining value. And another case with the Windhawk, where he's building for wave 9. where he's Oh, he didn't even have to go for the Violet. He got gold from Drakir, so he's able to build, build the full uh, full Millennium here. Right, he's got Millennium for Wave 9. Man, Witterson is just in love with in love with the Robos here. Holy moly. Robos, Hermit, just holding every wave. Daphne? Oh, I guess he... 
Oh, is he redraw? Oh, he's redraw. Redraw, that's awesome. Awesome to see some redraw. Redraw into Daphne. Covers his 10. He's just holding all these waves. Hero value. They choose hero over pawn shop. Fair, fair. Probably going hero somewhere around here. Oh, on an APS. Right, he redrew for the APS. It's an APS heroed Doomsday Sakura Rogue Wave. Holy smokes. Right? What do you even do? What do you even do if you're Drakir and Witterson? Right? What do you do? It looks like they're pushing really hard for wave 12. Right? Because they're super bad 13. So they're going for the undercut. They're dead 13. Dead 13. Easy holding 13. So their only chance was an undercut 12. Um, but because uh, because Pizig received a send on, on 10, just easy holds. Easy holds is 340. They take Davy King. And now would he go 16? If I'm Pizig and King's Dance, I'd probably just go 16, put this one away. Witterson's like, not really suing. He just pushed a little bit. Oh, they just go 15. I think they easily could have gone 16 and just win the game, but I'm not king and peasy. <laughs> but from the outside perspective, it's funny. especially when Jakir shows the uh, the Azuria, right? Uh, but they get decent damage. They easy hold the 17, right? Easy hold the 17, even though the Drakir and Witterson double sued, right? Drakir and Witterson double sued. Easily hold the 17, and the game's over. All right? And that Sakura never died. All right? And that is the power of Sakura. It's it's a domino effect. Once it holds, and then it holds, and then it holds, it becomes so hard to leak. Right? Because even every time he's pushing workers, push four workers, he's overvalued. Push two workers, he's overvalued. All right? Receives a send, he's overvalued. Right? And this is incredible. He's not even including hero value, right? He pushes six six workers. He's overvalued, right? He's, he's probably the lowest under. I guess King was a little, a little, under, a little less under. But yeah, he's, he gets to push 11. Like he, every time he gets to push workers and be right on value or overvalue because Sakura just keeps gaining stacks. And after, after, wave, uh, after wave 11, it gets double the stacks. So it's it's just a compounding effect. Yeah. But I hope doing these rolls helped you guys. And if you're still here, let's let's do a couple more. Right? Let's just do like some some like bam. Some quick quick spitfire rolls. Alright, if I only had the one minute to explain it. Champion. Alright, champion. Let's put a minute on the clock. Champion, I like Archer, but we've already done the Archer, right? Too many times. But yeah, look at the Flying Archer right there. Even without Sork, I'm thinking Flying Archer with Champion. Not not going to deny, right? Like, this would be a Flying Archer. I want the bunk for, for 9, right? Uh, we got our Swift tank. Probably just going to take Bone because imagine. Champion. Flying Archer with Dark Mage. Holy moly. Right? Like, this is a beautiful roll right there. Starting Flying Archer. Bone Crusher in the split. So our Bone Axe is our, uh, our Oathbreaker. Might need to Shuriken on Wave 5. Um, could just build the Tempest Wave 6. Right? Tempest is actually pretty decent Wave 6. Um, yeah. And wave, wave 9, we just either need an Antler or 2 or a Bunk. Probably in the split. We can also do, like, some Orchid Shurikens. Uh, and and you're just winning the game by then. It's even Battle Scars, right? Battle Scars on the bunk or something else. Uh, so that would be one option. Could also go Fire Elemental. Fire Elemental with Champion. Super juicy. Those are the two main options I'm seeing with Champion. And for me, I like placing Champion ASAP. Right? So I'm either going Fire Elemental... Both time, both of these rolls, I'm taking the infiltrator so that I can sure can wave five if I'm scared. All right, but yeah, I would go fire elemental. Uh, 
in this case, I might go Daphne instead, right? If I'm not going to go Flying Archer with Champion, I would go Daphne and Aqua. Definitely need the Infiltrator. I still like my Bones. I still like the Antler. I still like the Bunk, right? Look at how perfect that is, right? Again! Oh, can I not? I can't go again. Oda Math. Welcome to Nova. Oh, maybe I had to click some stuff. Alright, maybe I maybe I'm dumb. Oh the, I got photo mask on the reroll. That's hilarious. I don't know if that was on purpose or not. I think it was. Uh Poda Mask, last one. Alright. Poda mask. Replacing the Poda one. We're adding a couple of masks. Uh we just need the false made in the mask and the split for wave four. We've got Steeds, I mean, Daphne, Antler, Bunk. This is just a perfect roll, right? This this is game winner, and it's Battle Scars, right? Like, this is this is just perfect. And it's Champion. Oh, my goodness. All right? This is a perfect wave four if I'm not getting more than 80 Mythium. With Champion, I actually might even hold, to be honest. With champion, I think I hold wave four. Even with this like super undervalued. Too good to know here. Yeah, this is just too too powerful. Champion with mask on Poda. Although I'm champion and double locking when you think about it. <laughs> Alright, uh but yeah, and then just in case you're scared, right? A lot of people will brute you on five, right? Brute, brute the pot on five. You don't see it coming. Add that steed, right? Add that steed, and now you're just cooking. Now you're just cooking. All right, this is just. I think I might pro leak the brute, but this is champion. Yeah, this, I mean, this is a pro leak. 22%. Right? Hellraiser for 7. Right? We have the gold. We're going to lift the split. We have that one steed, so we just keep holding. I mean, this this is just the role that you dream of. This is just the role you dream of. The Pota tanks perfectly. The Hellraiser tanks the split breakdown. I mean, you really can't draw this one on much better. I mean, you literally can't because this is champion and double lock, right? I don't know why that happened, but and you can just keep building steeds. If you're ever scared, you can uh, have your Pota tank a little bit less. Um, the bunk placement on wave nine is, is quite difficult. I will admit wave nine's bunk placement is probably the, the biggest thing. The most important thing of this role, uh, because you still want your Pota to tank. On wave nine, not a, not more than like forty percent. Right, thirty percent is where it's perfect. Um, so like in a perfect world on wave nine, right? A perfect world, you have an antler right there, right? So it tanks a little bit. Then you have a bunk, maybe. Was that one tile down? What does that look like? Let's say you get a big nasty scent. Eleven hundred value. You've got the bunk. You've got the antler. I'd like to see this wave nine. Right? Your Poda only tanked a little bit. Right? It could be bad. Could be bad. But your Poda's your your top damage here too. Right? I guess it's not. Your Hellraiser is your top damage. Surprise. Right, but I mean this is this isn't that bad. And this is where if my Pota tanked a little bit more here, right? If my Pota tanked a little bit more and this stuff was a little farther back, that's probably a full hold. Oh, I didn't right? This is probably now a full hold, right? I built a little bit farther back. Same thing. Oh, wait. Hellraiser is not tantrum. Give me a sec. And if you're still here, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you just watching me. 
play around in the sandbox, but at the same time, we're also learning, right? Like, this is not not just tomfoolery. But yeah, I'm hoping my... Hope. All right, we're going to do this one more time. One more time. Clear. Wave 9. Wish there was a, a way you could, like, turn it on and off. If you could turn on the Hellraiser on and off. All right. Final attempt. Final part of the video. Built a little farther back, hoping that the Pota tanks a little bit more. She tags a couple more creeps here. And that second creep could just be the change. That could be what we needed, right? That could be the difference, right? That could be the difference between you holding and leaking. I mean, seriously, that's that's a lot of creep difference. That is a lot of creep difference. Pro leaking the ogre, right? Pro leaking the ogre, or 62% leaking, right? That is where those minute details are so important. And sometimes they're not recreatable. But if you if you do it enough times, if you play the game enough, right? If you learn the right way, you're going to get it, right? At the end of the day, looking over at your teammate's lane or at your opponent's lane, if they're doing something really good, can be really helpful. But I think that's all. I'm Doofus McDooface. Uh, this was me going through roles, sort of strategizing how I think through the game. Um, I know a lot of it was just blah. But once again, this is just how my brain works. And maybe it's how your brain works too. And I'm hoping to do more learning stuff like this. And just talking Legion game theory. So I'm Doofus McDooface. And I'll see you guys on the next learning video. Enjoy.